We begin with President Biden's focus on the world stage and a lack of attention on the problems here at home. Our commander in chief is in New York City this week for the UN's annual General Assembly session. In his opening address earlier this morning, President Biden talked Ukraine, China, and the looming threat of climate change while calling for unity among the nations of the world. The United States seeks a more secure, more prosperous, more equitable world for all people because we know our future is bound to yours. Let me repeat that again. We know our future is bound to yours. And no nation can meet the challenges of today alone. But one thing the president failed to address is the unprecedented border crisis unfolding under his watch. In the last four days, Customs and Border Protection agents have reported an average of almost 9,000 migrant encounters per day. And President Biden just needs to look out the window to see the chaos oh. that's breaking out in the Big Apple. The city is now taking in over 10,000 migrants per month. And longtime New Yorkers are getting fed up with the crisis. Short-term New Yorkers are too. Just last week, some of President Biden's fellow Democrats were shouted down during a visit to the migrant shelter at the Roosevelt Hotel. Watch. And we're incredibly thrilled and excited to be here. And what we seek to do is to make sure that all the resources are necessary and that we are joining with the city and state at the well, thank you. I'm happy to be here with uh, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio for, for task, and members of our delegation as well as other members. We welcome immigrants here, and our city is a testament to the many immigrant communities that have shaped our past and are propelling us into the future. Harris, last night when I left the studio, it was sort of late at night, and I got treated to getting barricaded in on 6th Avenue because the president was about to drive by. And it was really interesting because the streets were almost silent, right? The crowds were those of us just walking home from the offices. And I noticed then after he drove by and then the gates were open again and we could walk home, that the streets were empty because there was so much containment that there were no tourists, all the homeless, all That's the right. people usually running the streets, right? They were all gone. And so I think to myself, if you look at this in the most favorable light, the most generous light toward the president, is it that he doesn't see the absolute devastation on his layover, for example, in El Paso on the way uh, down south? Did he happen to miss the fact that the streets were cleaned up for his visit? Is it well, that he just doesn't know? Uh, I'm so glad you brought up El Paso, because that's what our streets look like when I left last night, too, or late yesterday, too. Mm -hmm. And there were all those gates, and I had, you know, a police officer tell me, oh, there must be a parade coming. And we both kind of chuckled. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. the parade from Washington, D.C. <laughs> so I don't know if he ever sees the before and after. You know how we in the news show that, like before and then after the disaster. Mm -hmm. He never gets to see what's truly happening because it's forensically clean for him, both in El Paso and here in New York City. And Emily, you really hit the nail on the head when you say he just has to look out the window in D.C. It's coming to a city near you. So look, this just broke first on Fox. 25 governors are now calling on President Biden to provide information data on migrant crisis. Fox has this first. Governors of 25 states want him to give honest, accurate, detailed information. Now, you and I both know, what would that require? That he has some. Mm. That his people are actually filling him in on what those streets of New York City look like 15 minutes before he got here. Remember, the Roosevelt Hotel where AOC was, people were sleeping out, so I guess they just cleaned all that up. Where'd they put those people? Because the shelters are full. All right, so as a result of your policies, Mr. President, which incentivize illegal immigration, our states are carrying the burden of both the years-long surge in illegal border crossings and cartels' coordinated trafficking of drugs and human beings. The governors are led by Montana Governor Greg Gianforte, and they have sent this letter just now to the President of the United States. Will he even read it is my next question. What are they protecting him from next?
Great question. And Kaylee, to that point, the governor of Montana has said we've seen more fentanyl in the last six months of this year mm -hmm. than we have any other year, any other month combined. The amount of illegal immigrants in this country are five times the population of yeah. Montana. To Harris's point, when will it end? I guess the president's too busy on the beach of Delaware to look out the window, literally and figuratively. Yeah, and we know about that beautiful little baby you shared about on your show who died yeah. of fentanyl in a daycare. Um, I can't get that out of my mind. Another number I'd love to know, and I'm glad governors are demanding numbers in the interest of transparency and accountability. I want to know the number of migrant deaths at our border. Mm. It's a number that our reporters have been able to track down via sources, but I want an official total because yep. the atrocities for kids at the border, for migrants, for vulnerable people trying to cross with the promise of a sanctuary city here in New York, uh, they cross and oftentimes at their own peril. So I'd love to know that number. Maybe we'll get it from the federal government. I learned an interesting statistic this morning. In a 17-month period, from March of 21 to August of 22, so that's Biden administration, one million people enter the country, released into the interior. We lost track of 177,000 of them who did not give addresses. So this is separate from Godaways. This is people released into the interior. We can't track. But I didn't learn that statistic from Bill Malusian, who's brilliant and usually gives us those statistics. I learned this one from Fareed Zakaria in the pages of the Washington Post. My point being, when the Washington Post is publishing this kind of data, Fareed Zakaria, when I go over to NBC and the headline over at NBC, illegal border crossings are on the rise, and they have a whole article about the illegal migration, you normally only hear this at Fox News because we are typically the only outlet interested in covering the border. When the rest of the media is waking up, ooh, you got a problem on your hands, Joe, one of many, 99 problems, and an auto strike is just one, as Playbook said over the weekend. And so, Tammy, do you foresee there being, is this finally, is this the straw that broke the camel's back? Will the president suffer politically for the disaster that he's created on the southern border? I think it's adding to the rejection that's happening now and to the concern. Uh, what's interesting, though, also besides the, the people that are lost, there's also children who've been placed with either people who claim to be relatives or, you know, were children mm -hmm. who were alone when they came into the country. Over 100,000 of them cannot, they can't now be found. It's a very strange dynamic, but as you both spoken to, is that it would be good if Biden saw what was really going on, but it also would be good if Democrats and people watching other networks knew. We've seen this from the beginning. What really broke the back was the fact that there was no coverage of this disaster. You remember when our drone and Bill saw you know, the, the, this initial surge coming through at the border? No one else was covering it, and people were shocked to see what was going on. But that's why they've gotten a pass and it's gotten so bad because no one was being told about it by other networks, by legacy media, mm. until then you suddenly have people going to these blue cities and they were saying, how, what's go, how did this happen? Well, it happened because this has been going on and nobody was told. So the Democrats and Biden have been relying on ignorance on people not speaking about it, like the cat that hides its head under the curtains and they think you can't see the rest of the body. That's what they've been doing. People's lives are being destroyed. The economy's being destroyed. Crime, et cetera. It's, it's a disaster and it will affect him. Mm. By the numbers, just to use New York, over 110,000 illegal aliens. Texas has sent some 13,000 plus. The rest are Biden. To put this in perspective, and to ask the question, does he see it? It's actually, does he care? Biden is a cold political animal, he always has been, who won't care about whether he sees it right over here on 6th Avenue or anywhere else. It's about, does it help him get to his goal, which is the next term presidency? It's mm -hmm. always been who he is. He uses whatever issue, lies about it, lies about it the next day. We've got to see the people in charge. Democrats will be punished a bit, to Tammy's point, as people wake up because they now live with the problem. They're living with the problem on their street street, whether it's the Upper East Side, West Side, Chicago, look at what's happening in Chicago, look at California. It's not just in red states. And that's where Democrats will be punished. But Biden, let's stop it. Biden doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He cares about his outcome. And all of us are just fodder. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.